One important part of this course, uh, and particularly this chapter, uh, so this chapter is mostly theoretical, but it has a very important component, which is this, uh, this part and this video, which is law of large numbers. Law of large numbers is um, beyond um, this course, but some part of it we learn about it very well. Suppose that you have lots of random um, variables, x1, uh, x2, uh, and xn. And these random variables in a physical phenomena collectively they will uh, impact something and then you have one observation for instance suppose that your observation is some of these random variables x1 plus x2 plus xn or it could be um, a product of these ones so product of xi over i or it could be that you put these random variables in a matrix so some of them you put in a first row second row etc and then you obtain a matrix and you want to find the singular values of this matrix in lots of physical phenomena um, the, the, the singular values or eigenvalues or eigenvectors and so on. So the question is that what is the distribution or behavior of the sum of these random variables? Or what is the distribution or product of these random variables? Or what is the distribution of the eigenvalue or eigenvector of that random matrix provided that the size of the random matrix is large enough or what is the distribution of the sum of random variables if the number of entities involved in the sum is important for example uh, consider a room and a specific area on the wall uh, how many uh, molecules of the air they will hit the wall they create a pressure so a pressure is a random variable which is the sum of the forces created by the molecules that they will hit the wall so um, and then we want to know the behavior of that so this is called law of large numbers so law of large numbers they appear in different contexts if it is summation it has certain behavior if it is product it has another one so one specific form of law, law of large number is called central limit theorem central limit theorem is when you add um, some random variables and they have somehow some kind of independence between them and then uh, when the number of entities they're large enough the sum they behave like a normal distribution. We call it central limit theorem. But we have lots of other limit theorems or other uh, law of large numbers. So at the limit, when the number of of uh, random variables is very large. What is the distribution of certain uh, physical um, uh, entities? So this is uh, so large numbers. Uh, when an experiment is repeated uh, a large number of times, uh, then uh, under certain conditions, the average of the result will tend to the expected value of uh, for uh, more than so. For example, if you um, have a, a coin experiment and then if it comes head you say uh, one if it comes zero it, you say zero and then if you repeat this experiment independently and fairly then the average will converge to uh, let's say one half is if the coin is fair if not it will converge to a uh, probability of head so, uh, for example, um, suppose that um, uh, x of n be a random uh, variables with expected value of mu and uh, xn and uh, mu n uh, to have some uh, correlation uh, denoted by this function. In this example, uh, if you estimate the, the, the expected value by the uh, sample mean, as n increases, we want to know what is the behavior of that. So uh, in this question, limit of xn, we expect to converge to the expected value. 
but uh, but this is a random variable x sub n and mu is a real number so these conversions should have a sense so we need a mode of convergence for that for instance this theorem says that if your correlation function here satisfy this function which most of the practical correlation functions they will satisfy this one in that case uh, uh, x bar n or sample mean converges to mu in mean square sense so this is a law of large numbers because because it determines the behavior of your uh, sample mean when the, the the number of involved uh, random variables here in this equation is large enough and the proof of this theorem i leave it to you because you can you can define y of n equal to x minus mu and then you can uh, <clears throat> calculate uh, mean of y bar n to the power of 2 expand this one and then calculate and you see that this guy will become equal to this one now if the limit of this one is zero then this guy is zero and the proof is complete um, <clears throat> So this, this theorem, if, if the random um, um, components, if xn are uncorrelated, or if this function is zero except that m and n are equal, then you can simplify to uh, Chebyshev condition, um, which becomes this one. So this means that if the sum of the variance is divided by the square root of the number of samples, uh, uh, is uh, the limit of that is zero then your sample mean converges to um, um, uh, in this example we have seen that uh, under um, uh, some conditions uh, the average behavior of a large number of um, uh, the sample mean of large number of random variables uh, becomes um, your expected value but this condition is that each random variable have uh, the same mean and uh, the sum of total variance, uh, the limit of this guy is zero. And um, uh, converges to the statistical mean. So the, the, the sample mean converges to a statistical mean. So these two conditions are uh, necessary.